Hello everybody, thank you for joining us. In this video we're going to be going through the Nomarigan Pet Dungeon in, exp in Expansion 9.0.5. If you're looking for new strategies that might not be working, maybe you looked at old strategies and they weren't working and now you're looking for a new strategy. Um, because a lot of the pets were nerfed in 9.0 then um, and even before 9.0, then you uh, you want to watch this video we're going to go through the pet dungeon and, and show you exactly how to do it with the uh, pets that exist in 9.0.5 if you've already done it then you know you can just come here to manapoof in um in the legion dalaran you can see where i'm at and he'll port you directly to the nomarican pet dungeon if you haven't done it before then um you'll need to go to the nomarican pet dungeon and complete it on easy mode first uh, where, where you can heal your pets it's fairly easy and straightforward to go through and then once you've done it on normal mode, then you can come here. So if you don't know where Nomarigan is, it's over here by Iron Forge. You, um, you'll need to go in, go downstairs, take the little elevator downstairs, and come over here to Microzox. Hi, how are he you? gives you the weekly um, dungeon you? challenge quest. And he also uh, sells the various pets that uh, you can buy with the uh, pristine gizmo. So after you complete it, you'll get one quick pristine gizmo, and then you can come back here and buy whatever you want with the currency that you have. So before you go in, just make sure you heal all your pets. And then he'll queue you for the dungeon. This is um, the second hardest pet dungeon in my opinion. Um, you'll need to follow these instructions pretty closely if you're having trouble with one of the uh, one of the encounters. The first encounter is the prototype of Noitron. For this encounter, we're going to use a Cinder Pup with Flame Breath, Crouch, Volcano. I have a brown rabbit, it can be any rabbit, with Scratch, Adrenaline Rush, and Stampede. And then I have a Fell Flame in my back line with uh, Burn, Immolate, and Conflagrate. So when you start this off, you're going to immediately cast Volcano and then switch to your rabbit. So you switch to your rabbit and you cast Stampede to apply the debuff. With the Stampede debuff on and Volcano um, going at the same time, you get extra damage from the Volcano. And the Volcano does most of the work for you. So as soon as Stampede's up, don't cast anything else. You're going to switch immediately back to your Cinder Pup and cast Volcano again. And then you're going to immediately switch back to your brown rabbit. I got critted earlier on, so we'll see if I get one off. Um, but you want to get a stampede off again here to make sure you get this shattered defenses a debuff on him. When your rabbit dies, you're going to switch to your fell flame. And you're going to cast burn until he goes into his mechanical round. And as soon as he goes into his mechanical round, you can cast Immolate followed by Conflict, right? So the Noitron goes down, and we go to the Nomarigan Teleporter. So when you go to the Teleporter, you have three pets. You can do them in any order you want. I normally start over here with the Living Napalm. This is the easiest fight. It takes the longest, but it's, it's the easiest. For this fight, I use a Silk Bed Snail with Absorb, Shell Shield, and Headbutt. And then I have an Amethyst Shell Hatchling, and it can be a variety of the different ha Shell Hatchlings, but you're gonna wanna have Leech Life, Sticky Web, and Stone Skin, and then I have a Garden Frog in, um, as a backup with Water Jet, Healing Wave, and Swarm of Flies. When you start this off, you're gonna cast Shell Shield, and you're just gonna use Absorb. You're gonna keep Shell Shield up, 
and continually cast Absorb. Uh, when Shell Shield gets down to one, then you're just going to reapply it. Otherwise, you're going to cast Absorb. This can be a rather long um, encounter. It's never failed me yet, um, but it can be rather long and to some degree boring. So every now and then I'll throw in a headbutt just to speed things up. Um, but you'll notice that your, your the living pa napalm will probably die, and I'll have full health when this when this happens. So um, it's a pretty foolproof method. The backline pets aren't that much trouble after the napalm goes down, but it does take some time because uh, he tends to heal himself with healing flame, and uh, and absorb is rather uh, low in terms of its damage. So here, just to speed things up a little bit, I'll use Headbutt. Okay, when the napalm goes down, you're going to have two backline pets. These are both mechanical. You can uh, switch to one of your backline pets if it's, if it's more appropriate for you to do so. Otherwise, what I suggest you do is keep Shell Shield on and continue to cast Absorb. Given the right RNG and the right backline pets, um, I've actually had my Silk Bed Snail solo this entire encounter, with inc including both the backline pets. Um, certainly doesn't happen all the time, but it can happen. Um, just because this spider tank, spider mechanical, does a, a an auto attack that is completely blocked by shell shield, and um, and between absorb constantly healing yourself and shell shield um, blocking virtually every other attack, um, I've had my silk snail, bed snail basically or not basically but soloed the entire encounter before. Okay, so if your soak bed snow goes down, you'll bring in one of your shell hatchlings. 
and you're going to keep stone skin up and you're going to ro rotate between leech life and sticky web. So leech life, the healing from leech life double is doubled with sticky web um, on. So essentially it's, it's a very similar dynamic as it was with the silk bed snail where you're doing damage and constantly healing yourself up. Okay, so that encounter is by far the easiest, as you can see. Then you encounter the Living Sludge. For the Living Sludge, I'm going to use an Ambisoth Idol with Crush, Sandstorm, and Rupture. And then I have another Crimson Hatchling, or I'm sorry, a Shell Hatchling. It can be any variety of the Shell Hatchlings with Leech Life, uh, Sticky Web, and Stone Skin. And then I have a Fleeting Frog in the back line with Water Jet cleansing rain and swarm but it can be any frog with those attacks so you're going to start things off with sandstorm you're going to fall, then you're going to follow that up with rupture and then you're going to crush until the living sludge is dead When the backline comes in, in this case I have an undead and a mechanical. This is the reason I have a variety of pets in my backline that have um, different types of attacks. You could, um, you're going to want to switch. In this case I have an undead who's going to do a lot of damage against my enemy south idol. So you're going to want to switch, in this case, to the fleeting frog that has um, that is strong against undead pets. Oh, I'm stunned. Sorry, or I'm, I'm rooted so I'll have to pass here. Or I guess I can, I can hit him. And now I'll switch to my frog. Cast Swarm. I'll follow that up and if I have, if I'm still around to do, uh, I'll follow it up with Cleansing Rain. This will work out well. He'll be in his undead round. I can't do any damage anyway that's going to do anything. And then I'll cast Cleansing Rain. Now when the last pet comes in, you're going to want to either finish out your, your frog or uh, you can switch to another pet if you happen to have uh, another pet that's strong against this mechanical. I'm going to recast Swarm and just use my frog until he dies. And then I'll bring in my Crimson Hatchling or my Enemy Scythe and, and finish him up. In this case, I'll just bring in my Enemy Scythe Idol. I have more than one of these, so if something strange happens and he dies, I don't have to worry about um, you know not having a backup. So I'll start with Sandstorm and then cast Rupture. And then crush until the drilling machine is finally down. Okay, now you come to Living Permafrost. If the living, living Permafrost, the strategy uses a Leviathan Hatchling with Water Jet, Toxic Skin, and Primal Cry. And then I have another Shell Hatchling with the same attacks and the, another Frog with Water Jet, Healing Wave, and Swarm of Flies. So when you start this off, you're going to start this off with Toxic Skin. And then you're going to cast Water Jet.
You're going to cast Water Jet again. This is actually also one of the more easy fights because he ends up doing all the damage to himself with the ticks of Frostbite. Okay, and then you're going to use Primal Cry. Okay, so when the backup line comes, in this case I have a mechanical and a critter, um, I can either switch to one of my backup pets, or just, I'm not going to use this Leviathan Hatchley again the rest of the dungeon, I can just continue to cast Water Jet. He'll do damage against himself, just like the last pet did, and when he attacks me, he'll receive damage back. Toxic Skin's about to fall off, so I can simply re reapply Toxic Skin. You can see the amount of damage that he's doing to himself just by hitting me. So the toxic skin, 5% of the attacker's max health each time they deal damage. So each time he hits me, he takes 5% of his damage off. So that's how the first pet goes down. I'm sorry, this frostbite I, I mentioned earlier, I was incorrect. Sorry, the frostbite's doing damage against me, but the toxic skin is doing a massive amount of damage to them each time they hit me. I'll just keep casting Water Jet until this pet goes down. If if it didn't work out that way where you didn't, all the pets didn't die, sometimes it doesn't happen. In fact, most of the time the Leviathan Hatchling does not kill all the pets. But if it does, then great. If it doesn't, then you just bring one of your backup pets as needed to, to go against whatever um, backup pets they have. So for the door control console, door, door control console, there's a number of strategies out here for the door, door control console that don't really work in 9.0.5. The strategy that I'm gonna use has worked for me consistently. So I certainly um, encourage everyone to consider this strategy if you are already having difficulty with the door control console. You might have been using it in 8.3, no problems, but the strategy you are using isn't working. This one seems to work pretty well. I'm using a silk bed snail with ooze touch, acidic goo, and dive. Then I have a, a spire shell snail with slime, acidic goo, and dive. And then I have a rapana whelk with ooze touch, acidic goo, and dive as well. So basically, all of them have acidic goo, and all of them have dive, and then they have the first first attack. So when we start this off, we're gonna start off with acidic goo. Then we're gonna use dive. And then I'm going to use Ooze Touch. So I'm going to use Ooze Touch again until he goes down. Okay, so if your Silk Bed Snail dies, that's like it just did right there, then you'll bring in your um, your next um, pet. Sometimes your, your Silk Bed Snail doesn't die. And what you're going to do here is you're going to do the same thing. You're going to use acidic goo and you're going to use slime, but he's going to put up an attack. And what you're going to do is you're going to save dive. So when um, ice tomb has one attack left or one, one round left, and you're going to use dive to avoid that attack. Okay. So now he put it up. So now it has two rounds left. So when this says one, I'm going to use dive until then I'm going to use acidic goo or slime. Okay, so now it's down to one. I'm gonna use dive. I got lucky and it critted there. If it didn't crit, then I would continue to rotate between acidic goo and slime and dive whenever um, the ice tomb is on one. When, the, when the, the sludge disposal unit comes in, I'm gonna continue the same rotation, acidic goo and, uh, and slime. And I'll use dive when it's on cooldown. And 
And, and that's about as simple as it gets for the door control console. Some of the other strategies actually used to work really well, but 9.0.3, I've been having a lot of difficulty with other strategies. That one has worked for me every time I've used it. So if you're having difficulty, um, I hope that you might find that strategy a bit more consistent for you. So then you're going to jump in the Bomb Crusher 5000. You're going to make your way down to the bottom of the um, bottom of the ramp here. If you end up not making it down before it die, you blow these things up or your thing dies, then you can just run down. See, like my thing died right there, so I'll just run down. Okay, at the bottom of the path here, you'll have two pets. You can, you can do them in any order you want. For the leper rat, I'm going to use a spring rabbit. It can be any rabbit. Um, this is a speed speed version. I have a flurry, dodge, and stampede. And I have a four sproutling with club, leech seed, and sons of the root. And then I have a frog in my back line with water jet, healing wave, and swarm of flies. When you start off, you're going to start off with dodge. Then you're going to follow that up with stampede. When stampede's over, one flurry will put him into his undead round. And dodge will be off of cooldown, so you'll use your dodge in his, un in his undead round. So when, uh, so, uh, when this comes in, what you want to do is you want to use flurry a couple times until you're up to the point where you're probably going to die. And ideally, if you can cast stampede on the last attack to leave the debuff on him, uh, it makes this, makes this, in, this particular encounter a little bit quicker. So this will be my third, uh, flurry on the cockroach. And now he has. The, the his stampede going this is going to kill me it probably won't kill me this round but it's going to kill me very quickly so for uh just to make sure that i get the the debuff on him i'm going to um cast stampede now you see it missed the first time but the second time it applied shattered de shattered defenses Now, you're going to choose. Now, I have a mechanical here, and I have an undead, so you're going to choose. I don't want to bring in the forest sprout necessarily because it's not very good against that, so I'll just bring in my leopard tree frog. And you can cast swarm flies or water jet until the cockroach goes down. I'll just start off with swarm of flies. And then spam water jet. In his undead round, you can't really do anything. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is a mechanical. I think I said undead earlier. This is mechanical. So you'll want to go ahead and continue casting water jet. Or I messed that up. Oh, that was a critter. I, I apologize. I, I, I turned that back round backwards. I apologize. So this is a mechanical. The previous pet is now already dead. Um, so I'll just continue to cast uh, water jet and keep some more flies up and healing wave uh, whenever my health gets down to about three quarters. He'll come in here and explode on me if I don't kill him here. So my frog's still about three quarters of the way full. I may end up using him uh, in the next uh, fight or two here. So against the cockroach, you're going to want to use the a, sh a, crim a shell hatchling with leech life, sticky web, and stone skin. And then I have a forest sproutling with club, leech life, and sons of the root. And then I have a, the same leopard tree frog that I was using prior. So when you start off, you're going to want to start off by playing stone skin he's not really going to do any damage to you but what he's going to do is he's going to cast this greater apocalypse so you just need to make sure that you um 
use sticky web rather than go back and forth because you need to move through this fairly quickly. Your, your stone skin is going to negate most of his damage and you're going to want to just continue to apply stone skin, um, continue to apply sticky web to um, take down the cockroach as fast as possible. Okay, so the cockroach goes down. He's going to bring in a mechanical pet. I'm not going to want to stay with this. I'm going to want to switch to my forest sproutling. Immediately cast leech seed. And then cast sons of the root. And then club, if you get stunned there, then you can cast leech seed again or club. You just need to, you just need to get him into his mechanical round here. Okay. The last one is a cockroach. So you're going to want to switch back to your crimson shell hatchling. And you're going to let's see what's going to happen is he's going to reapply greater apocalypse. So if for some reason that didn't happen, then you'd want to spam sticky web to take him down. But this cockroach negates the other cockroaches greater apocalypse, which would kill your entire team. So you'll just re reapply stone skin and then use sticky web. If you kept your hatchling in on the first, after the first cockroach and tried to take down the spider tank, there's a very really good chance that you won't take him down quick enough to avoid the first greater apocalypse. So that's one reason why you want to switch to your forest sproutling to take down the spider tank quickly so that the second cockroach comes in and negates the first cockroach. Okay, so when that pet goes down, another pet will come in. This giant rat here. So against the bloated leper rat, the strategy we're gonna use uses a ghastly kid with hoof, ethereal, and haunt. Then I have an infected squirrel with stampede, creeping fungus, and corpse explosion. Then I have a derby catchling with falcosaur swarm, iron skin, and predatory strike. When you start off, you're going to want to start off with haunt. This strategy is more specific, so you want to follow this virtually, virtually, you know, exactly as I say. So you're going to immediately switch to your squirrel, and you're going to cast creeping fungus. followed by st Stampede. Now, you're in your undead round. Uh, you're going to cast Corpse Explosion. Sometimes this happens in a manner in which you your Corpse Explosion attack occurs in the round before and you actually don't die after Corpse Explosion. If that happens, then you'll want to re reapply a Stampede before your round finally ends, if that makes sense. So when that ends, you're going to bring in your Dire B Catchling. 
and you're going to immediately cast Iron Skin, followed by Falcosaur Swarm. And you're going to use Predatory Strike. If Predatory Strike did not take him out in that, that time, then you would re recast Falcosaur Swarm. He's in his undead round, so it doesn't really matter what I do. I could just pass or do Falcosaur Swarm. It doesn't make any difference. But the key there is if the, if the Predatory Strike didn't kill him, then you'd cast Falcosaur Swarm to put him into his undead round if necessary. And that is all for that. Now, this door opens up and you have three pets before the final boss. What I recommend you do is either start with the guard tiger or the guard wolf because sometimes the mechanical strider can take out the pet that I want to use um, against against the other pet. So, and I'll show you that when I get to it. So I'm going to start with the guard tiger. So for the guard tiger, I have Mr. Bigglesworth with pounce, frost nova, and ice tomb, and then I have a leopard tree frog with water jet, healing wave, and swarm of flies. And then I have a ruby sapling with iron bark, thorns, and photosynthesis which you probably won't get to the previous sapling, but, and that's the pet that might die in the, in the middle fight there. So when you start off, you're going to start off with Ice Tomb. You're going to immediately cast Pounce. Followed by a second Pounce. Okay, now we're going to cast Frost Nova, and this is to keep him in, because he's going to feign death. And we don't want him to be able to leave the, the, the fight. So we're going to, that's the reason that was cast. Now we're going to cast Pounce again, and he feigned death. Well, that would have switched him out, and we don't want that. So uh, we're going to cast Pounce again, and that takes out uh, the Guard Tiger. Okay, and in the backline pet, you keep your Mr. Bigglesworth in and do whatever damage that you can do. Um, in this case, uh, I'll go ahead and reapply Ice Tomb, but you could just spam Pounce and be fine. So when the Leperat comes in again, you're just going to do whatever damage you can do until your Mr. Bickersworth dies. He doesn't normally solo this entire encounter. suppose it's possible it could happen, but it's it's not normal. I'll apply um, Ice Tomb here. Yeah, I've never had Mr. Burgersworth solo this, but he 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 commonly goes through a lot of the a lot of the pet. He comes basically to where he's at now through the first two pets. Um, I'll apply Swarm of Flies here. He's in his undead round, so just go ahead and heal yourself. And that's it for that pet. So the guard, the, the, the Regan guard Mechano Strider, um, I'll, I'll do him last. Cause like I said, that he, your, your pet can actually die and that one of your pets that you need can actually die. So it, for the guard wolf, um, I'm going to use crush flamethrower and volcano, a volcano with my abyssius. I have a leopard tree frog with water jet, healing wave and swarm flies. And then I have a ruby sapling with iron bark thorns and photosynthesis. And, and I have a backup pet instead of this ruby sapling, but not it, it's a it's a shop pet, so I, I try not to use it, and that's the reason I, I don't want it to die first, because I'm assuming that some people might not have that pet. 
So against the Guard Wolf, uh, you're going to start off with Volcano. And then you're going to spam Flamethrower. So when the backup pets come in, you're going to do, again, just do whatever damage you can do to the backup pets before you, you bring in your own pets to, to take on. So I'll spam Flamethrower. This is a mechanical pet, so I'll do Flamethrower as much as I can. If I can get a Volcano off, great. If I can't, then I'm just going to continue to do as much damage as I can. So here, if I can get this off, great. I'll go ahead and put Volcano out. Okay, so in this case, I have a mechanical pet and a mechanical pet. I'm going to bring in my ruby sapling to take on those mechanical pets. I need the ruby sapling also in the middle fight as well, which I'll show you. Um, when you bring in this pet, um, you're going to want to start with applying thorns and then apply photosynthesis to keep your health up. So here I'm going to apply, I'm going to apply photosynthesis. And now I'm going to apply, uh, now I'm going to use iron bark. I can't hit him here because he has dodge on. Normally you would, you're just going to waste your turn. You don't, you don't need to reapply photosynthesis, but because I can't hit him anyway, um, any one of these two attacks are, are pointless. So just go ahead and reapply photosynthesis here. So I'll do iron bark until thorns is down to one. So I'll, uh, I'm sorry, I'll go ahead and reapply, redo Iron Bark here to take him down. And then if I need to, I'll do it again, but otherwise I'll cast, I'll reapply Thorns. So you can see my Ruby Sapling's down about halfway. I'll just Iron Bark once or maybe twice, we'll take him out. So the Iron, the, or the Ruby Sapling is a really good pet for these fights, but you kind of need a couple of them. And um, for this Numbering and Guards me 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 Mechano Strider, the Ruby Sapling I also have. So you can also use um, the Shop Pet. I um, can't remember the name of it now. Let me look. The um, Hang on a second. It's uh, the Blossoming Ancient here. So you can use the Blossoming Ancient, which is really good in this fight. these fights. Um, but if you don't have that, if you haven't, it's a shop pet, so you have to pay for it. But if you don't have that pet, then uh, the Ruby Sapling is what I would recommend. So against the Mechano Strider, I'm going to use a Shell Hatchling with Leech Life, Sticky Web, and Stone Skin. Then I have a Frog with Water Jet, Wheeling Away. The same, it's the same setup, basically, but then the Ruby Sapling with Iron Bark, Thorns, and Photosynthesis. Okay, so when you start off, you're going to start off with Stone Skin. And then you're going to do a sticky web and leech life um, rotation on this. And it's going to take a little while because he's going to repair himself. He's going to rebuild and heal himself up. But um, the shell hatchling will eventually take down the mechano strider with simply rotation, rotating back and forth between sticky web and leech life while keeping stone skin up. So I'll keep doing this until, until stone skin is down to one. Now I'll reapply stone skin. And then go back to the rotation.
I just got tired of going down. I thought that might get a chance in critting and killing him. I got tired of going back and forth. It's just kind of slow. Should have reapplied stone skin then, but it's fine. Okay, so when the backup pets come in, the backline pets come in, um, you can continue to, to use the same strategy. He's going to have an, a Gatling gun that's going to be negated by stone skin, so just make sure that it, that it is up. And you just try to do as much damage as you can before your, your shell hatchling goes down. Oh, it didn't negate everything. I thought it negated a lot of it, but it just it just reduced the damage. So, again, just try to keep the same uh, stone skin up and do what damage you can. Okay, when, so when your shell hatchling goes down, you have a critter and you have this mechanical pet that's almost dead. So uh, with the uh, ruby sapling as being only good against the mechanical, I'll bring him in and I can bring him in now because the other two pets are already dead or the other two battles are already dead that I just did. So even if my ruby sapling dies here, it's not a, a huge loss for me. If you don't have the um, the other pet that I mentioned, the... Um, the oh, I forgot the name of it now. The blossoming ancient. If you don't have that, then you don't want to have your ruby sapling die in your first pet battle, and then need it in the other two. Um, so you'll do the same thing you, when you bring in your ruby sapling. You'll do the same thing. You'll apply thorns, photosynthesis, and then iron bark. So you see, the thorns alone took him out, but your ruby sapling took quite a bit of damage. So, um, so now you can see, like it's it's down on the on the, against the critter um, so you can i would just leave him in until your ruby sapling dies in this case normally i would go ahead and pull him out and put in the frog but since i don't like i said i don't need the ruby sapling any further in this dungeon um, you can go ahead and use him but don't do that if this is your first fight and you still have the other two fights because you probably need it So I'm just doing iron bark, keeping thorns up and photosynthesis, and you can see the ruby sapling is, is not easy to kill in, in this particular type of fight. But um, given the wrong RNG, you can definitely, your ruby sapling can definitely die if you, um, if you use him, if you go in the middle round first, your ruby sapling can die. Um, so that's the reason I do the middle fight last now, so that I know I have my ruby sapling available in the first two fights just in case I need him.
Okay, so a rather long encounter there, but you can see it, it works, and um, that's what we want. So when you pass that, you're going to come to the shadowy figure. He's going to do some dialogue for about a minute. You're going to be stunned, and then you're going to encounter the last... The robot, or I shall blow this entire facility to ruin. The last fight. We have been watching you. You haven't the faintest idea what you are up against. We have a plan. One so elaborate that a simplistic plebeian like you could never hope to comprehend it. I have just deactivated all safety protocols from this unit and took something special for us to keep. What's more, I have observed your pathetic strategy and have already predicted your next four moves. You cannot hope to outsmart someone of my advanced capabilities. I would wish you luck, but my words would be wasted. <laughs> Super teleport, activate! Okay, this fight can be the easiest fight or the hardest fight, depending on which strategy you use. A lot of the strategies um, prior to 9.0 are extremely difficult now, and it's most of the time they're impossible now. It just it's just a random thing, whether you get the crits or whether you don't get the crits dep determines whether you win or lose. So I certainly don't recommend many of the previous uh, strategies. This particular strategy though is virtually foolproof. Okay, this strategy uses an Icky with Savage Talon, Black Claw, and Flock, and then an Electrified Razor Tooth with Jolt, Paralyzing Shock, and Lightning Shield. And that's all you need. You don't even need any other pets. I, I put a Thunder Tail Flapper in the back line um, with Lightning Shield as well, just in case some strange thing happens. It never has happened. It doesn't mean it can't happen, but the Electrified Razor Tooth alone will completely take out the Pulverized the pulverizer body MK. So um, if you had difficulty with this with this pet battle in the past, this is the strategy that you want to follow. Go find yourself an electrified razor tooth, level them up, make sure you have an icky and that's all you need. Okay, so when you start off, you're going to start off with flock. Don't start off with a black claw like you normally would with icky. You just start off with flock. Now what happened is he switched me out to the Razor Tooth. So all I'm gonna do is, is uh, cast Lightning Shield. And that's all I'm gonna need to take him down to his first uh, mechanical round. I'm gonna go ahead and cast Paralyzing Shock here. And this is gonna send him all the way into his, his second mechanical round. So he comes back twice, right? So, so that takes him down. Now he comes back and then Paralyzing Shock takes him out of this round and now he's in his he's already in his last round okay i'm gonna cast jolt here but i don't even need to you could just pass because he's gonna hit me again and it's gonna take him out see how easy that is this fight is extremely difficult with the old strategies but also the easiest uh, fight in the dungeon with the new strategies or with this particular strategy so when you're done Microzox here, you can uh, select him and says this place is crazy, get me out of here. So that's what we'll do. Alrighty then. And that's it for the pet dungeon. You can come in back out to where he is at the beginning of the dungeon and, and turn in the quest and get your, your item and buy whatever pet you have with whatever uh, currency you have for, that, for this uh, encounter. With that, we really appreciate everybody watching we hope you found the information in this video helpful. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe for future content. Thank you so much. We will see everybody in the next video.